step into the fascinating world of the 1974 TV series Planet of the Apes. This famous show hooked viewers with its mix of sci-fi and social messages. As you watch, get ready for a wild ride of feelings. There are lots of funny, surprising, and sad facts waiting to be discovered, so stay tuned. What makes this TV series stick around? Is it the deep ideas, the interesting characters, or maybe the impressive special effects? We want to hear from you. What's your favorite memory or personal story about this TV series? Share your thoughts and memories below. Let's keep talking. The 1974 TV show is like a mix of Starsky and Hutch and Planet of the Apes. It's about two astronauts who end up on Earth in the far future. One astronaut is young and funny, while the other is older and more serious. The show is entertaining and has good sets and makeup borrowed from the movies. However, the story can feel repetitive because of its limited idea. Even though it didn't do well in the US compared to the UK, people still like it. The characters are strong and the writing, music, and cinematography are good in some episodes. Maybe it didn't do well in the US because it's not flashy enough. One interesting thing is that fans still wonder who played a character called Jonesy in the first episode, but the actor wasn't credited. In 1974, the TV series made a big change, replacing Space 1999 from CBS's fall schedule. This made Space 1999 go into first-run television syndication a year later. A famous voice in the series was provided by Royal Donnell. He also voiced Disney's Abraham Lincoln at the 1964-1965 New York World's Fair. Later, this version of Lincoln became an attraction at Disneyland and Disney World. Roddy McDowell, another person in the series, played the Mad Hatter in three different shows Batman the Animated Series, Superman the Animated Series, and the new Batman Adventures. These unique contributions from replacing Space 1999 to Royal Dono's voice and Roddy McDowell's performances showed the significance of this series. It left a strong impression on television and the careers of those involved continuing to influence even today. The TV series featured William Smith, known for his impressive stunts in movies. He brought a lot of energy to the screen and caught people's attention with his great acting. Meanwhile, John Ireland's marriage to Joanne Drew fell apart, partly because he got involved with Joan Crawford, his co-star from Queen Bee. Hollywood relationships often got messy, adding more drama to the actors' lives. Beverly Garland was famous for her acting skills and was also Carlos K. Goodman's mother-in-law. She acted in many different kinds of movies and TV shows and left a lasting impression on the entertainment world. Her work showed she could play many different roles well. In Hollywood, personal relationships mixed with work, making the stories behind the scenes just as interesting as the ones on screen. The connections among the cast members added to the overall story of the TV series. The actors' lives were like stories themselves, sometimes similar to the plots they acted out. The relationships between the cast members, both on and off the screen, were a big part of the entertainment world's bigger story. In the end, the TV series let these talented people show off their skills, but it also showed the personal dramas behind the scenes. The lives of William Smith, John Ireland, Joan Crawford, and Beverly Garland, and their connection to Carlos K. Goodman made the show even more interesting. Sandra Locke, known for her potential role in the award-winning My Sweet Charlie, had a connection with Fred Thomas Jones, a carpenter's son, as remembered by locals. Shifting to another important person, Roddy McDowell, in December 1998, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences honored him after he passed away. They recognized his acting career and praised his photography, leading to the establishment of the Roddy McDowell Photograph Archive at the Margaret Herrick Library. This archive contains millions of photos showing McDowell's contributions. To sum up, these behind-the-scenes details give insight into the lives of those involved in the series. Sandra Locke's early connections and Roddy McDowell's recognition after his death show different sides of their lives beyond TV. These bits of information give a peek into the personal and professional journeys of important people linked with the series. John Hoyt, known for his memorable roles in Star Trek and Battlestar Galactica, left a strong impression in the 1974 TV series. He brought depth and charm to his character, which viewers really liked. Joanna Barnes faced tough social consequences for choosing acting, but she showed her dedication and talent in the series despite the challenges. Roddy McDowell, loved both on and off the screen, was cremated after he died. His ashes were scattered in the Pacific Ocean, which was a fitting tribute to his long career and the impact he had on many people's lives. 
Their contributions, both in front of the camera and behind the scenes, continue to connect with audiences, making sure their memories live on for a long time. Roddy McDowell, a well-known actor, was considered for important roles on TV. For example, he was first choice for the main part in WKRP in Cincinnati, but couldn't do it, so Gordon Jump got the role instead. McDowell also almost got roles in Star Trek like Trelane in The Squire of Gothos and voicing Armas in Skin of Evil. But he didn't get these chances because people worried about how he looked and acted. Even though he was thought about for Constable Odo on Star Trek Deep Space Nine, someone else got the role eventually. The TV show Planet of the Apes from 1974 almost got canceled after only 14 weeks because not many people watched it in the US. But it did really well in the UK. Even though it didn't last long in the US and had some problems there, it made a lasting impression on people around the world. Sandra Locke, known for her roles in several movies, was involved in various aspects of the entertainment industry. She was associated with George Crook, who served as the mayor of Bell Mead, Tennessee, around the early 2000s. Among her close acquaintances was realtor Denise Fraker, the widow of William A. Fraker, who directed her in a film called A Reflection of Fear in 1972. Locke also owned a production company called Caritas Films, although it is no longer operational. Her connections and involvement in different projects demonstrate her diverse engagement in the entertainment sector. In the 1974 TV series, Morgan Woodward holds a notable record for his numerous guest starring roles on Gunsmoke and Wagon Train. Woodward appeared in 19 episodes of Gunsmoke and 11 episodes of Wagon Train, more than any other actor. To increase ratings, there was a consideration to return to the original timeline of the movies and reintroduce characters Cornelius and Zira. However, this idea never materialized. Royal Dano, another actor in the series, was profiled in Names You Never Remember, with Faces You Never Forget by Justin Humphreys, highlighting his memorable contributions to the entertainment industry. Roddy McDowell, born to Thomas Andrew McDowell, a merchant seaman, and Winifred McDowell, of English and Scottish descent, and Irish mother Winifred Lucinda Corcoran, had an older sister named Virginia McDowell. As for Royal Dano, he passed away on May 15, 1994, at the age of 71 in Santa Monica due to pulmonary fibrosis. Royal Dano was the father of actor Rick Dano and Royal Edward Dano Jr., who lived from September 19, 1946 to February 25, 1994. He was also the grandfather of Hutch Dano. These snippets of personal details provide a glimpse into the lives of the actors who contributed to the 1974 TV series. The series, known for its dystopian narrative, enlisted talented individuals like McDowell and Dano who brought their skills to the fore. Their personal backgrounds add a layer of understanding to the faces behind the characters, creating a connection with the audience. In conclusion, the actors, McDowell and Dano, not only played roles in the series, but also had distinct personal lives that contributed to the broader narrative of the show. Roddy McDowell, a close friend of Elizabeth Taylor, was the one person she confided in the most. He was always understanding of her. Morgan Woodward, after attending the University of Texas Law School, paused his studies due to active duty in the Air Force during the Korean War. Serving with the Military Air Transport Command in Korea, he later chose acting over law. William Smith, while in the U.S. Air Force, achieved success by winning the light heavyweight German-Austrian boxing championship. These individuals contributed to the 1974 TV series Planet of the Apes. In the famous 1974 TV show, William Smith, a talented actor, was praised for his great acting in 2005 and 2008. He showed his amazing talent, making people remember him. Sandra Locke, well known for her roles in Rosie, the Rosemary Clooney story, and Clean and Narrow, played the role of a mother in these films. Her acting was touching and unforgettable, showing her ability to play any role deeply. Another important actor in the show, Roddy McDowell, not only impressed viewers with his roles as villains in both Batman and Batman the Animated Series, but also stands out as the only actor to do so. His ability to switch between different roles showed how good he was at acting. These actors, each bringing their special talents to the show, played important roles in making Planet of the Apes memorable. Their acting is still loved, and their influence on entertainment is clear. It shows how good they were at acting and how dedicated they were to their work. The show has left a lasting impression on fans' hearts. To sum up, 
1974 TV show Planet of the Apes had a great cast, with each actor leaving a strong impression on entertainment. William Smith, Sandra Locke, and Roddy McDowell, through their amazing acting, have made their mark on TV history. The show's memory lives on, and their roles are still remembered by fans worldwide. Sandra Locke, known for her role in Planet of the Apes, was involved in a legal dispute with Warner Brothers in 1994. She filed a lawsuit against the studio, alleging coercion to drop a palimony suit against Clint Eastwood in exchange for a development deal. Locke claimed she proposed numerous projects, some of which later became films like Junior and Addicted to Love, but were all rejected. The court initially granted summary judgment to Warner Brothers, but Locke appealed, and the case was reinstated in 1997. A settlement was reached in 1999, just before the trial, where Eastwood was listed as a material witness. Roscoe Lee Brown, another actor from Planet of the Apes, started his acting career on the New York stage. John Hoyt, whose last screen role was on Nell Carter's sitcom Gimme a Break, also appeared in Planet of the Apes. Mark Singer, the cousin of director Brian Singer, played a role in the 1974 TV series. His connection to the director added an interesting familial aspect to the production. Singer's involvement brought a familial touch to the series. Sandra Locke, with an IQ of 149, was known for disguising her intelligence behind feminine wiles. Her portrayal in the series showcased her ability to bring depth to her characters, adding a layer of intrigue to the show. Jacqueline Scott, a guest at the Western Film Fair in July 2007, shared the platform with other notable personalities. Lana Wood, Lynn Borden, Betty Lynn, Joyce Meadows, Brett Halsey, Rick Lentz, and Robert Dix also attended the event, making it a gathering of prominent figures in the entertainment industry. These individuals, with their distinct contributions, brought a unique dynamic to the 1974 TV series. The connections and experiences they brought to the show enriched the overall narrative, making it a memorable production in the world of television. The 1974 TV series Planet of the Apes featured several notable individuals in its cast and crew. Sandra Locke, known for her role in the series, had a familial connection with Ruth Wood, marked by a last communication during the Christmas holiday of 1989. A tearful Winnie the Pooh drawing adorned the card Ruth sent to Sandra, expressing apologies, which was actually in response to a Christmas card Sandra had sent earlier. Royal Dono, another figure associated with the series, along with his son, rests in the Los Angeles National Cemetery in Plot C-189-9. Roddy McDowell, a significant contributor to the show, once cast his mother Winifred McDowell as the innkeeper's wife in Kidnapped. Despite her aspiration to pursue acting further, this role remained her sole appearance on screen. These anecdotes shed light on the personal and professional lives intertwined within the backdrop of the series. Each individual, from Locke to Dono to McDowell, played a unique role both on and off the screen, contributing to the fabric of the show's history. Despite its popularity, the Planet of the Apes TV series from 1974, featuring Roddy McDowell, remains unavailable on streaming services like Disney+, Plus, much to the disappointment of fans. Disney, which acquired 20th Century Fox, holds the rights to the series. Roddy McDowell, known for his roles as Cornelius and Caesar in the original film series, also starred in four Oscar Best Picture nominees How Green Was My Valley, The Pied Piper, The Longest Day, and Cleopatra. William Smith, another actor in the series, held the U.S. Air Force Light Heavyweight Weightlifting Championship. The series' absence on streaming platforms leaves many fans waiting for a chance to revisit the classic. Woodrow Parfrey, known for his work primarily on Broadway and regional stages during the late 1940s and 50s, transitioned to television and film in the 1960s. Jay Robinson, who had supporting roles in various films, including playing Dracula in Train Ride to Hollywood and the Bay City Rollers Meet the Saturday Superstars, also appeared in the series. Additionally, Morgan Woodward's brother, Lee, gained popularity as a weatherman on KOTV in Tulsa, often appearing with his puppet, King Lionel. These actors contributed their talents to the 1974 TV series. Woodrow Parfrey, Jay Robinson, and Morgan Woodward each brought their unique backgrounds and experiences to their roles in the series, adding depth to the cast performances. Their diverse careers in stage, film, and television enriched the overall quality of the show, providing viewers with memorable characters and compelling storytelling. Roddy McDowell starred in two short-lived sci-fi series from the 1970s Planet of the Apes and The Fantastic Journey. 
Sandra Locke, who posed for Playboy's Sex Stars of 1969 issue, still receives racy Frank Bez snapshots in fan mail for her autograph. James Franciscus, known for playing Brent in Beneath the Planet of the Apes, declined the role of Alan Verdon. The 1974 TV series Planet of the Apes featured notable actors such as Sandra Locke and Norman Alden. Locke gained recognition for her role in The Outlaw Josie Wales, a film preserved in the National Film Registry for its cultural significance. Alden, known for his role in The Sword in the Stone, was the last surviving cast member of the 1963 film. Interestingly, the series lacked female gorillas or orangutans with only female chimpanzees portrayed. The episode The Good Seeds was originally scripted with a gorilla family, but was changed to chimpanzees. This choice meant female apes were only depicted among the chimpanzee characters. Beverly Garland, alongside her husband Fillmore Crank, ventured into the hospitality industry in the early 1970s. They established the Beverly Garland's Howard Johnson's Resort Lodge, a 154-room hotel situated near Universal Studios. Sandra Locke, known for her role in the 1974 TV series, once declined the opportunity to play Ruby in the film They Shoot Horses, Don't They? Released in 1969? Later, in 1997, she unveiled her autobiography titled The Good, The Bad, and The Very Ugly, A Hollywood Journey. These off-screen endeavors of the cast shed light on their diverse interests and engagements beyond the world of Planet of the Apes. Royal Dono, who was considered a talented actor in 1949 by the New York Critics Circle, had a son named Royal Dono Jr. Unfortunately, Royal Dono Jr. passed away from liver failure just 48 days before his father. On another note, Sandra Locke served as an honorary chairwoman in 1992 for the Starry, Starry Night Auction in Costa Mesa, Calif. This event aimed to support Human Options, a shelter helping victims of domestic violence. These connections to important events outside of television give us insights into the lives and involvement of people associated with the series. Sandra Locke, known for her potential projects, faced a tough moment in the late 1960s when she lost a chance to be in a movie adaptation. She really wanted a role in The Sterile Cuckoo, but lost it to Liza Minnelli. Even though this setback hit her growing career, Locke kept going, chasing her love for acting. Morgan Woodward, who went to the University of Texas in the late 1940s, had his own journey before finding success. Like Locke, he had challenges along the way. Despite Hollywood calling, Woodward focused on education, laying the foundation for his future in acting. For Locke, getting into her dream film project had financial challenges and uncertainties. But she stayed strong, pushing for her artistic dreams. Woodward, by prioritizing education before fully jumping into acting, showed his commitment to personal and professional growth. In the big story of Hollywood's history, Locke and Woodward's experiences show the toughness and persistence needed in its often tough world. Their journeys, though different, show the ups and downs of chasing dreams and entertainment. Whether dealing with money problems or taking their own paths through education, Locke and Woodward stayed committed to their craft. Their stories remind us that making it in Hollywood usually means overcoming big challenges. Even if their names aren't as famous as some others, Locke and Woodward left their mark on the world of film and television. In the TV series, Verdon held the rank of colonel while Burke was a major in the Air Force. Morgan Woodward received a star on the Walk of Western Stars at the William S. Hart Museum and Park in Santa Clarita, California in March 1990. Roddy McDowell formed enduring friendships with co-stars Maureen O'Hara and Anna Lee during the filming of How Green Was My Valley. On an episode of This Is Your Life in 1991, McDowell revealed that he and Lee continued to affectionately address each other by their character names, Bron and Hugh. McDowell's admiration for O'Hara was evident when he jokingly proposed to her at his 21st birthday party, to which she humorously accepted. Roscoe Lee Brown was born in either 1922 or 1925, though he maintained it was 1922. He had a significant role in the series. John Ireland, who appeared in the show, was the father of John Ireland and Peter Ireland. He was also a former stepfather of Dick Haynes Jr., another notable actor. Morgan Woodward, hailing from Fort Worth, Texas, shared the screen with Larry Hagman in Dallas, and both had roots in Fort Worth. These actors added depth to the cast with their diverse backgrounds and talents. Sandra Locke, known for her connection with Clint Eastwood in the early 70s, tried to get a part in his movie Breezy in 1973, but was considered too old. Later, she joined Eastwood again in 1975. 
There were supposed to be eight episodes for the show, but they never got made. Some of the planned episodes were never filmed, like Hostage, A Fallen God, and The Trial. Jay Robinson, recognized for his unique voice, stopped acting in 1994. People sometimes mix up his voice with Tony Jay's because they sound alike. Robinson briefly hosted a show called Beyond Bizarre in 1997. James Naughton and Ron Harper, actors in the 1974 television series, found the production impressive in terms of expense, but expressed disappointment in what they perceived as lackluster writing. Naughton, in particular, noted a recurring formula in many episodes one of the trio gets captured and the others have to rescue him. This repetitiveness left the actors dissatisfied with the creative direction of the show. Set about 1,000 years after the events of Battle for the Planet of the Apes, the series unfolds in a post-apocalyptic world. This time gap establishes a unique context for the narrative, exploring the consequences of the events that transpired in the previous film. Notably, Norman Alden, an actor in the series, had familial ties to Ed Wallace, an automotive writer and talk show host. Ed Wallace, the nephew of Alden, hosted Wheels with Ed Wallace on KLIF AM Dallas. This personal connection adds a layer of interest to Alden's involvement in the series. In conclusion, while the 1974 television series had its share of impressive elements, including a significant budget, the actor's dissatisfaction with the repetitive plot structure and perceived lackluster writing remains a notable aspect of its legacy. Jay Robinson, well known for his memorable roles in movies like The Robe and Demetrius and The Gladiators, was a big part of the 1974 TV show. Mark Singer, who is Laurie, Claude, and Gregory Singer's brother, also starred in the series. Roscoe Lee Brown, a respected member of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, also joined the cast, bringing his talents to the screen. These talented actors helped make the show significant in TV history, showing off their skills and making it memorable. This combined effort contributed to the show's success and its lasting impact on entertainment history. In 1974, the TV show featured actors who came from different backgrounds. Roscoe Lee Brown got noticed in 1970 for his acting in The Dream on Monkey Mountain at a theater in Los Angeles. He won an award for his great performance. Morgan Woodward's dad was a doctor. Mark Singer, another actor in the show, was once married to Richard Emery's sister. These personal facts about the actors give us a peek into their lives outside of the TV series, adding more understanding to their roles in the show. The show itself is set in a world after a big disaster. It tells a story about humans and apes that have become more advanced. The actors' personal lives give us more insight while the show tells an interesting story in a made-up world. In summary, the TV series from 1974 had a diverse cast and a mix of real life and made-up stories, making it an interesting watch for viewers. Beverly Garland, known for her role in the 1974 TV series, formed a close friendship with Julie London, who is only a month older. Garland's colleague Ron Troop, stepdaughter of London, also appeared alongside her on My Three Sons in the early 1970s. During her youth in Glendale, California, Garland participated in small theater productions and received voice training from Anita Arliss, sister of the Oscar-winning actor George Arliss. Sandra Locke, another prominent figure in the series, stood at 5'4", which might have seemed shorter due to her preference for flat shoes over heels. However, this height was comparable to authentic stars like Julie Christie and Natalie Wood, who were slightly shorter than Locke. Her illusion of being shorter was often enhanced by her pairing with taller actors in her films. These connections and attributes enriched the dynamics of the cast, contributing to the overall depth of the series, despite the challenges they faced. Their diverse backgrounds and experiences added layers to the characters and their interactions on screen. In the world of TV history, some actors from the 1974 show have made a big impression. John Ireland, who was born in Vancouver, did something important by being the first of his kind to get nominated for an Academy Award. Another famous actor is Roddy McDowell, who did more than just TV. McDowell was in three movies that are considered really important How Green Was My Valley, Lassie Come Home, and The Famous Planet of the Apes. Jacqueline Scott, who was also in the show, had a sad time. She passed away just a month after her husband, Gene Lesser, died. They were married for 62 years. These actors all had their own stories and successes in a show that's very important to our culture. The show's effects aren't just in its story, but also in the lives and memories of those who helped make it. Sandra Locke, 
known for her role in the 1974 TV series, did summer theater in Washington, D.C., and summer stock in the East. However, her attempt to pursue acting professionally in New York was met with discouragement, with many advising her to return home. Despite her struggles, she became part of the entertainment industry. Later in her life, when her mother passed away, she did not attend the funeral. After her own death, news coverage was notably minimal, and she was even excluded from prominent tributes. Some speculate that she orchestrated this to keep certain aspects of her life private. Sandra Locke, known for her role in the 1974 TV series Planet of the Apes, had a noteworthy personal life. During her battle with cancer at Cedars Sinai Hospital, she developed a relationship with surgeon Scott Kunin, who was notably younger than her. However, their romance didn't last due to their significant age gap. William Smith, another notable figure from the series, was honored with induction into the Venice Muscle Beach Bodybuilding Hall of Fame in 2010. Throughout her career, Locke was represented by Leonard Hirschen. In the TV series, two astronauts, Alan Verdon and Pete Burke, encountered a time warp near Alpha Centauri in 1980. They found themselves on a planet dominated by intelligent apes. Throughout their journey, they encountered various challenges and faced conflicts with the ruling simian society. Sandra Locke, known for her acting career, also pursued music during the late 70s. She performed in venues like L.A.'s Palomino Club and appeared on television, singing duets with notable artists like Eddie Rabbit, Phil Everly, and Tom Jones. Mark Singer, whose father hailed from P.R. Zemysl, Poland, had a mixed ancestry including English, Scottish, and distant German roots. He played a significant role in the series, portraying one of the central characters. As the astronauts navigated this ape-dominated world, they sought a way back home while encountering different societies and facing moral dilemmas. The 1974 TV series Planet of the Apes starred actors such as Sandra Locke and Joanna Barnes. Locke underwent multiple cosmetic surgeries, including facelifts and blepharoplasty. Personal photos of her and Clint Eastwood are displayed at the Frazetta Art Museum in East Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania, near Frank Frazetta's exaggerated portrait used on the original poster for The Gauntlet. Joanna Barnes' husband, Jack Warner, headed a California-based architectural firm, which was ranked four times in the top 100. He designed notable structures like the Bel Air Country Club and a wing of the Santa Barbara Museum of Art. Barnes passed away from cancer at the age of 87. The series cast and crew members had varied experiences and accomplishments outside the show, adding depth to their contributions to the entertainment industry. Beverly Garland, who shared a birthday with Julie Adams, appeared on the same episode of Mannix as Adams. The show faced challenges in the United States, partly because it aired late at night. Woodrow Parfrey, alongside Roddy McDowell, Norman Burton, and Eldon Burke, is one of four actors to feature in both the original Planet of the Apes film and the 1974 series. These factors contributed to the series' struggles in finding success. Beverly Garland, known for her role in The Scarecrow, and Mrs. King received the Golden Boot Award in 1986 from her co-star Bruce Boxleitner. Roddy McDowell, who starred in both the original movie and the 1974 series, is one of the few actors to have done so. Rod Serling, though uncredited, played a significant role in shaping the series, having written the original treatment and two scripts. These scripts laid the groundwork for the show's premise of two astronauts, and a chimpanzee being pursued by an ape civilization. However, Serling's storyline involving a magnetic disc was ultimately discarded by the show's writers, leading to the abandonment of the series' only story arc. Morgan Woodward was honored with the Cowboy Spirit Award in March 2006 at the 16th Annual Bison Homes Festival of the West in Phoenix. This award recognized his embodiment of the integrity, strength of spirit, and moral character depicted by the American cowboy. Sandra Locke shares her birthday with notable individuals such as Rue D. Giuliani, Gladys Knight, Jean-Pierre Layard, Billy Vera, Gary Stewart, and Rita McNeil. Woodrow Parfrey faced hardship early in life, being orphaned as a teenager and enduring abject poverty during the Depression era. William Smith, famous for his roles in both A and B movies during the 1940s, shared a sweet story from when he was working on The Ghost of Frankenstein. He talked about how Lon Chaney Jr., the main actor in the film, treated all the kids, including him, to ice cream during breaks. In sports, William Smith became known for throwing the discus an impressive 151 feet, which was a bit more than the top IU distance at that time. 
Sandra Locke started her career as a secretary at WSM Radio and later moved up to public relations for its television branch. While working there, she got to meet famous people like the Monkees and James Neal, who would later become a Watergate prosecutor. These less known sides of the people involved in the series give more insight into its history and context, helping us understand better how it was made and the people who worked on it. Norman Alden's notable role came in Andy, where he portrayed a 40-year-old mentally disabled son of Greek immigrants in New York. This character embarks on a final night of seedy adventures before his parents send him to an asylum. Sandra Locke discovered in grammar school that she had a maternal half-brother named Donald Locke. Despite sharing a mother, they had different fathers. Their mother, Pauline, had multiple marriages, including one annulled marriage to painter Thomas H. Nelson. The man they knew as Dad Alfred Locke was not biologically related to either of them. Donald ran an air conditioning and refrigerator business. In 1995, Roddy McDowell expressed frustration during an interview for American cable station Us, a network about the limitations of his makeup during battle for the Planet of the Apes. He struggled with not being able to eat or touch his face due to the chimpanzee prosthetics. The constant itchiness caused by the makeup even led him to tears. Joanna Barnes resided in the Sea Ranch development along the northern coast of California. William Smith worked as a lifeguard on the French Riviera. Mark Singer, along with Jane Badler, acted in both V and V. The 1974 TV show, Planet of the Apes, caught attention for its unique idea and interesting story. It's about a future where apes are in charge of humans. The series talks about power, oppression, and what it means to be human in a way that makes you think. Though it didn't last long, it's still loved by many fans today. The television series, unlike the movie, takes place in a future California after a nuclear war, departing from the original setting in New York City. Morgan Woodward's brother, Dr. Lewis Woodward, was a respected music professor at Modesto Junior College in Modesto, California, coinciding with a tenure of actor Jack Alam's half-brother, who also held a Ph.D. Sandra Locke, who portrayed a character in the series, faced a personal battle with breast cancer. Diagnosed in 1990, she underwent a double mastectomy and chemotherapy. Sadly, she passed away from cardiac arrest related to breast and bone cancers in 2018 at the age of 74. Her death was not publicly announced until six weeks later by the Los Angeles Department of Public Health. No funeral or memorial service was held, and her body was cremated with her ashes given to her husband, Gordon Anderson, whom she married in 1967. Roddy McDowell, known for his role as Caesar Augustus Octavian in Cleopatra, missed an Academy Award nomination due to a studio error. Despite critical acclaim, a mistake in his categorization led to him being excluded. The studio's attempt to rectify the error was futile as the ballots were already printed. Sandra Locke, another notable figure, faced a harrowing experience in 1974 when she was robbed at knife point. This incident led her to take precautions, including carrying a pistol for safety. Years later, in 1987, she found herself in another ordeal when the plane she was traveling in suffered an engine fire. The situation forced an emergency landing in Bangor, Maine, with Harrison Ford also on board. They managed to fly out safely the following day. These events shed light on the challenges and unexpected turns faced by individuals associated with the series. Despite setbacks, both McDowell and Locke continued their careers with resilience. Morgan Woodward was honored with a special award in 1995 for his work in Western movies. During a TV show, some actors had different makeup, like gloves for one actor and more realistic hands for others. Roddy McDowell, who played Galen, wasn't as detailed in his makeup, which made his hands look different. Besides acting, McDowell was really good at dancing and even won contests for the Charleston and Cha-Cha on the Arthur Murray Party in 1950. Sandra Locke, known for her role in Planet of the Apes, was a dedicated student in high school, earning a high grade average and being voted Duchess of Studiousness by her senior class. Her yearbook ambition was always to take disappointment with a smile. Gordon Anderson, a widower and sculptor, created a miniature set of characters from Alice in Wonderland, which was later acquired by Demi Moore. Jacqueline Scott, along with her husband Jean Lesser, attended a Twilight Show gathering at the Hollywood Show, where they signed autographs for two days in April 2018. These anecdotes offer glimpses into the lives of individuals associated with the series. Sandra Locke's father disappeared during World War II, leaving a big gap in her life. This became a big part of her story. 
Morgan Woodward, a well-known actor, celebrated Gunsmoke's 50th anniversary in 2005. He enjoyed being with James Arness's family, remembering the old times of the show. John Hoyt went into teaching after college. He also worked for a college magazine. These unexpected parts of his life show there's more to people than just their main jobs. In Hollywood and academia, these people made their own paths and left a lasting impact. Their stories mix with history, making a picture of life's ups and downs. Life is full of ups and downs, and these stories show that well. They keep us thinking about the past and how people lived back then. So, history keeps going, telling the stories of people who left their mark. Sandra Locke, Morgan Woodward, and John Hoyt are part of those stories, and they'll be remembered. Jack Land Scott participated in the 26th Twilight Zone convention at the Hilton Hasbro Heights in New Jersey on August 12, 13, 2006. Roddy McDowell attended the Los Angeles premiere of The Sound of Music on March 10, 1965, accompanying the movie's star, Julie Andrews. John Ireland's older half-brother, Tommy Noonan, acted alongside him in I Shot Jesse James, and Noonan also collaborated with Ireland's former brother-in-law, Peter Marshall. These events offer insights into the lives of the actors involved in the series. Roddy McDowell, known for his role in the 1974 TV series, was considered for the role of Pennywise in the 1990 horror miniseries It, but lost out to Tim Curry. Jay Robinson, another actor from the series, retired in 2000 after nearly 50 years in the industry. He lived in Sherman Oaks Ka until he passed away. In 1980, 20th Century Fox released five compilation movies using 10 of the 14 original episodes. Roddy McDowell filmed wraparounds for each one, reflecting on his experience with the series. The four episodes not included were The Good Seeds, The Cure, The Deception, and The Liberator. William Smith had a big choice to make when Bruce Lee offered him a lead role in Enter the Dragon. But because another movie got delayed, he had to say no to the opportunity. Meanwhile, Kim Hunter, a famous actress, was asked to appear in the show, but she said no because she was tired of wearing heavy makeup for her roles before. John Hoyt, who's been acting since way back in 1937, surprised everyone by performing as the master of satire at the Rainbow Room under the name John Hoistrat. His performance was really good and impressed the audience a lot. These stories show how the entertainment world can be full of surprises and missed chances. Every decision an actor makes, whether they take a role or not, can change their career path. In the movie and TV industry, the connections between people and the choices they make create a changing environment where anything can happen. The experiences of William Smith, Kim Hunter, and John Hoyt make the entertainment world seem more interesting and complicated. In Hollywood history, these stories give us a peek into how actors' lives and decisions shape the industry. The stories behind the scenes like those of William Smith, Kim Hunter, and John Hoyt make the entertainment world's story richer and more complex.